I know I'm not the first one to recognize this, but at least among my friends no one really got it. The title of Wes Anderson's newest film I Love Dogs simultaneously sounds like I love dogs. And that is just super cute. Exactly the same here. Words out of my mouth. Nobody's giving up around here and don't you forget it, ever. You're Rex, you're King, you're Duke, you're Boss. I'm Chief. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and Wes Anderson's Isle of Dogs was my first animated movie this year and at least in terms of its visual delight it's pretty hard to top. After Early Man, which is still not out here in Austria, it's already the second stop motion work we got in 2018 and right from the get go this looks absolutely stunning. The setting is Japan, 20 years in the future. We are in the city of Megazaki and also on a trash island nearby, which is used as an exile colony where all the dogs are deported to. Why? Because there was an outbreak of dog flu and in order to clean house and town and country, Mayor Kobayashi, a totalitarian-like ruler, sent all dogs away including Spots, which belong to his distant nephew Atari. Of course the little boy wants his beloved pet back and so his odyssey begins. After his truly fantastic, fantastic Mr. Fox, this is the second stop motion animated movie by Wes Anderson. And like with many movies of his, it's unquestionably a Wes Anderson film. With all the stuff you expect and love from him, if you love his work of course. For me it's a little bit hit and miss. I can always respect his unique style and approach to filmmaking, but sometimes it's just too much of that quirkiness. Screen Junkies just did a pretty good honest trail of all his movies that you might want to watch if you haven't already. For the first like half hour I was completely hooked by Isle of Dogs. Just the craftsmanship alone will make you sit in awe. What Anderson and his team crafted and brought to life is astonishing. From the movement of all the dog fur to the locations that are filled with details. Anderson is a very clean, very tidy filmmaker. His scenes and compositions are flat and almost everything is nicely lined up right before the camera. He has a playful obsession with symmetry and overall everything is very artificial to the acting and the delivery of the line itself. This expression of total control flourishes wonderfully with all the dirt and waste that comes with the story and setting of Isle of Dogs. It's a film filled with garbage, rotten food, disease, coughing dogs, dirty fur and so on. And it's a fascinating treat for your eyes. There are also some very neat snippets of 2D drawn animation whenever a character appears on a camera screen, which is also a nice juxtaposition to the real puppets and models. But Isle of Dogs is also a pleasure to your ears. The score was composed by Alex Alexander Desplat and it mostly contains these very rhythmic, constantly forward pushing tracks that keep the narration in constant motion. The voices of the dogs will sound very familiar as they are provided by an all-star cast from Brian Cranston, Edward Norton to Bill Murray, Jeff Goldblum, Greta Gerwig, Scarlett Johansson and many many more. And since everybody speaks very peculiar in a Wes Anderson film, it kind of fits that these are mostly dogs talking. But with all that being said, as the movie progressed I felt myself more and more growing distant to it. For once it's a really simple and thin story for a film that runs for 101 minutes and it got to the point where it wasn't really that emotionally engaging. Pretty much all of the different dogs stay very shallow and despite our main protagonist Chief, voiced by Brian Cranston and a little boy Atari, sharing some good bonding scenes together around the halfway point, it never quite got there for me. And I think a major reason why the movie never sat completely right with me was its whole approach to the language barrier. As stated in the beginning the setting is Japan and Anderson decided to let everybody speak Japanese without subtitles, while only the dogs speak English. What starts as a kind of a funny idea with only every other line of Japanese being even translated by some kind of news translator grows tiresome and also problematic as the movie goes on. The world and also its main protagonist Atari felt weirdly distant, as if we shouldn't really connect to these people and their struggle. Later on there's also the character of this young English exchange student voiced by Greta Gerwig and I really couldn't stand that. Of course she was the only one speaking English all the time, even if she was addressing the Japanese around her and just by watching I thought it comes across rather unpleasant. It also didn't help that I found her whole side story not that interesting and of course she has a crush for Atari all of a sudden. I've got a crush on you. 
Yes, this is a very whimsical and mostly charming film, but I found this side of the story really unengaging and too generic. And speaking of whimsical, because of that typical light-hearted Anderson touch and a missing emotional punch, I was a bit uneasy about that whole concentration and extermination camp connection that's clearly evoked here. I appreciate Anderson's general political view, though the movie is very on the nose. I only wish such topic matters would have come with more uh, impact. Overall the film is still too unique and impressive to not at least enjoy it a bit. And honestly I really did, so I can look past some of its flaws. In German I'd say Isle of Dogs – Ataris Reise ist ein umwerfend animierter Film, dessen Geschichte und Charaktere aber leider etwas dünn geraten sind und dessen Umgang mit seinem japanischen Setting problematisch ist. I give Isle of Dogs 7 out of 10. It's more like 6.8, but I don't do that. Wow! Alright, that's it like always. Comment below and let me know what you think about Isle of Dogs. And also let me know what's your favorite movie by Wes Anderson and also let me know what's your favorite stop motion animated movie. Also, thank you so much because we just reached 4000 subscribers. So let's see when we reach the 5. Okay, you can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram simply at the Jimmy Cage. And you know, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell. Mm -hmm.